sleepless day. All over the city, there's anxiety in the air. A new year has just begun, but so far, it feels very like the old year. Uncertainty, confusion, it's fraying our nerves. Most of all, the waiting, waiting for our neighbors, our oldest enemies, but our closest friends to make up their minds. It's our future too, it's on the line. So please, for all our sakes, get on with it. Sure, yeah, come in. Everything okay? I've had a call from Tanya's office. She's coming to Dublin. Spontaneous visit. They need a volunteer. For what? It's a fact-finding mission to the border area. That's all they told me. And she needs someone to, well, drive her around is one thing. Thanks a lot. Great to know you value me so highly. It's not just driving. Needs to be someone well-informed on local issues. How do they phrase it? An explainer. Our CEO. One of the planet's most brilliant minds needs an explainer. It would be perfect. You're good in all that history and politics stuff. I'm not sure about that. You never miss an opportunity to explain things to me. Uh, often more than once. What's that supposed to mean? There is another reason I thought you'd be right for it. You're going nowhere fast, career-wise. Oh, hang on. No, no, you said it yourself just the other week. No, did I? I'm treading water, Sinead. I need a new challenge. Well, here's your chance to get noticed. Make a good impression on Tanya. Who knows where you'll end up? A fact-finding mission. How long for? You'll have to ask Tanya. She flies into Dublin tomorrow. I'd book a decent hotel if I was you in case it's overnight. And hire a posh car. Okay, I'll do it. One other thing. You're not to tell anyone she's in Ireland, not even within the company. Cool, but I want something in return. <laughs> within reason. When I get back, let's finally make a decision about moving in together. <laughs> There are private airport terminals for people like Tanya. Well, of course there are. People who fly in on their own shiny jets don't want to queue with the hoi polloi. That's where I find myself the next day, waiting to greet our company's esteemed founder. International upbringing, Oxford graduate at 19, graded nano at 24, hit the Forbes rich list at 30. Tanya! <sighs> Hi. I'm, no, I'm not going to let him do that to us. Sorry, who? If he wants a guarantee that we'll go into production by March, we want a guarantee that he'll pay the balance by April, yeah? You tell him that. Call me right back. Hi, I'm Tanya. Oh, it's great to meet you. My name's Finn. Do you think you could find me some berries? They forgot to restock the jet. Uh, uh, sh sure. What kind of berries? You know, goji, bilberry, whatever you can get. I'm not fussy. Uh, yes, Paloma? Is she? Oh, put her on. Hi, pumpkin. Are you being a good girl? No, Mummy's working now. I've worked for her company for 10 years, but I've never met Tanya. Very few of us have. Tanya is famous for working on the go. Like a shark, she never stops moving. I don't like the way they're trying to push us around. Okay, bye. Right, let's go. How are the berries? They're berries. It's all I could get, sorry. They're mostly out of season. They're always in season somewhere. You are... Fintan, a Plymouth Nano. Worked for you for nearly 10 years. Area? User experience. What level? Analyst. Ah, you'll be looking to move up at your age. I'm still in my 30s. So am I. I'd like to drive. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't put you on the insurance. I assumed you'd want me to do the driving? Not a problem. Do you have the Policy Panda app? I don't think so. Instant insurance anywhere in the world. My details are already in there, so it takes approximately that long. Pull over. I'm guessing it's not cheap. For what you get, it's very competitive. I tried to buy them out when they were in the development phase. They fought me off. Risky strategy, but it worked. Props to them. This car runs on fossil fuel. Yes. You're not familiar with company policy? I am. What happened? I was concentrating on getting something suitably upscale and I kind of forgot. You'll have to change it. Earliest opportunity. I do my best. So, Tanya, I'm told this is a fact-finding mission. You're the explainer, right? The Northern Irish backstop plan in less than 50 words. Go. Okay. It's a safety net. If Britain can't find a way to avoid a hard border... What? 
just Britain. Okay, if all concerned can't find a way, mm -hmm. then Northern Ireland remains in the customs union until such time as some other solution is found. People say it's a triumph for the Republic, a diplomatic coup. Our leaders stood their ground, refused to be bullied by Britain. That generally goes down well. And by standing their ground, they may well have condemned the UK to a no-deal Brexit. I don't think that's fair. No? The Republic's position was based on a risky gamble that the UK government will either swallow the backstop or cancel Brexit altogether to avoid the chaos of a no-deal Brexit. <laughs> what if neither of those things happen? Which, let's face it, is quite plausible. What looked like a diplomatic triumph could turn into a strategic mistake, poisoning relations with your closest and most important economic and cultural ally for years to come. Also, I read somewhere, I'm sure it's just doom-mongering. Let's hope so. Anyway, the other day, I suddenly thought to myself, I want to see this place for myself, this currently invisible border. That's all? You want to see the border? Take a few selfies, buy a souvenir? It seems you're quite witty. OK. A physical border is complicated. Checkpoints, police, customs. Expensive. Bad optics. Nobody really wants it, right? <laughs> That's putting it politely. The solution, as always? Technology. Of course. You have a solution? Did I say that? Something in development. Which way? Oh, it's, it's straight ahead, at the junction. What I will say, our innovation team has been working on a very exciting new system. I believe we could market it to the relevant authorities, but I need a picture in my head where we might put it. So now, you tell me where I need to point this filthy machine. Well, that's it. A sign on the road. <laughs> Welcome to Northern Ireland. Looks very like Southern Ireland. People come and go without any kind of checks. The division has always been, maybe, psychological is the best word. It's not a natural frontier. Makes it harder to get rid of if it's all in the mind. I still don't think it'll happen. Whatever the doom mongers say, there'll be a way to keep everything open. A cunning plan. There are plenty of plans. A lot of them never come to fruition. I think recent events around the world have shown that to be the case. If Theresa May wins her vote in a couple of days, then we'll stay as we are. And if she doesn't? Even then, unless they actually crash out with no deal at all, we'll still end up with some kind of backstop. That's the likelihood. If I built my business around what's likely, I'd still be operating from the mezzanine at my parents' place. Being ready when the unlikely happens, that's the key to growth. Will there be a technological solution to the Irish border question? I don't know. Will Nano be ready to move if that comes to pass? You bet we will. The new system, is it terrestrial or satellite? Let's say, hypothetically, it's both. OK, so you'd need to find sites near the border, set back from the road. Which means, stop me if I'm off piece here. Go on. Some private land may have to be accessed. This field, for example. I'll ask around to find out who owns the land. Don't you have the Who's House app? Uh, I don't think so. Establish your GPS coordinates. Dead easy. Who's House copies them in for you. Now it's searching every publicly available land registry database in the world. Did you try to buy them out as well? It's neat, but their business model lacks the potential for real growth. Voila! This field is owned by... Take a look. Douglas McDavy. Interesting. Yes. Here we are. Former vice president of the Ulster Farmers Union and a local councillor of the unionist persuasion. Is that good for us? Should be. Having some kind of frontier is important to them. A discreet tech option might be attractive. What's your strategy? We find his email address. Way too slow. OK, we call him. What time do farmers stop work for the day? Well, I don't know. Sundown, I suppose. Pretty much now. Let's go. Sorry to land on you uninvited, Mr McDavy. Well, you're lucky to catch me in. This time on a Sunday, I'd normally be at me badminton. Fine game. Only I've torn me meniscus. I'm sure I recognise you from somewhere. Have we met? I doubt it. It's my first time in the area. You were on the telly. Dragon's Den. <laughs> I used to be. One season. Oh, I love that show. Why did you stop? I have my own business to run. You might have heard of it. Nanu. God, who hasn't? Fair play to you now. That's a hell of a business. Giving Bill Gates and co a run for their money. And here you are in my kitchen. I'm guessing it's not a social visit. We're interested in your land. A small parcel of your land. Oh, diversifying into the dairy sector, are you? 
Yeah, let me give you some advice. Don't. You'd be lucky to break even. Especially now with all the Brexit chaos. It's for a trial. If it's GM, I'll stop you there. It's not GM. I don't hold with that whole shenanigans. Location data synchronization. What's that in English? <laughs> it's a discreet and unobtrusive technological solution. <laughs> to what? Keeping track of people and vehicles. Ah, right. So this is to do with the border. The reason we've dropped in on you like this... We need to position tracking equipment at intervals along the border. Look, there have been various ideas floating around for years now, and they're always sold in the same way. No barriers, no cops, no helicopters, not like the bad old days. Amen to that. But it's still important to have some kind of division between North and South. You think it's important? Why? P pretty obvious reasons. Or do you assume that I think it's important? That any landowning Ulster man with a Protestant name is automatically a hardline lever. Am I right? Can I jump in here? Uh, please do. You and I, Douglas, we're business people. What interests us is not the party line, but the bottom line. Can I borrow that? <laughs> Let's unpick this Brexit stuff. There are numerous unknowns in play here. Some we can guess at, some we can barely imagine. We can't control events, but we can anticipate their consequences. Right. In any situation, there might be four possible outcomes. The smart business person brainstorms four feasible strategies, each one costed, time-scaled and lawyer-proofed. You know, you should write a book. She has. Amazon bestseller. I'll send you a copy. Clinton, make a note of that, will you? On it. Douglas, I'm not going to ask what you think will be the Brexit endgame. Why? Because I don't care what you think. I actually have some fairly well-thought-out ideas. Do you care what I think? <laughs> Come on, be honest. Hand on heart? No. Right answer. I've been called a genius, a prophet and a visionary. I'm none of those things. What I am is an opportunist. OK. An ethical opportunist. Where possible. What I will ask you, Douglas, is this. If there's a Brexit settlement involving a soft border, policed not by humans, but by my location data synchronisation technology, would you or would you not like to be a part of that? An affirmative answer now could open the door to long-term points-based rewards that would easily dwarf your income from dairy production. You know what, Tanya? I wish we'd had you negotiating the withdrawal agreement. Barnier and co. wouldn't have had a chance. But the answer is no. What? Are you serious? There is another option. A more tentative agreement whereby you make less money in the long term but might still opt in at a later date. That's a clever alternative. I think so. And a load of hot air. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Mrs May gets her way in the vote. The only border solution that will please me is no border. Just an open road with cars and trucks going both ways. Preferably with some of my heifers on board. Even if the UK wants that option, it may not be possible. If there's no deal, then the Republic will be under an obligation to impose custom and immigration controls, whether it wants to or not. I'm aware of that. As for the UK, it won't be politically sustainable to allow the free movement of people ad infinitum. Nobody's suggesting that. No? How then will these people be monitored and controlled, bearing in mind that some of them will be illegal immigrants and even terrorists? Look, I'm well aware there may be difficulties ahead, but for now, I'm sticking to my position, at least until March the 29th. So my answer is, thanks, but no thanks. No, there's nothing wrong with the car, per se. I just had a kind of, you know, attack of conscience. You know, like, like what would David Attenborough say if he knew I was driving around in this high-end gas guzzler? Uh, so I need something electric and I need it delivered to my hotel. It, it's, it's in Monaghan. Oh, no, cost is not an issue. You call me back. Thanks. Oh, hi, Tanya. Well, how's your room? I asked you to think of next steps, Finton. Shoot. OK. Local schools. An essay competition. Sponsored by Nano. Three different age groups. The topic, is technology more reliable than humans? First prize, a brand new IT suite for the winner's school. IT suite? Mm -hmm. What is this? The 90s? Let's say a cloud-based learning platform tailored to the winning school's specific needs. Right. Yeah, that could, that could work too. Or, you know, have you eaten? The restaurant downstairs is supposed to be good. I don't eat in restaurants. Allergies. Food preparation standards are random. I have a supply with me. I'm going to meditate now. Have a good evening. OK, so tomorrow we look for new sites for the trial. Correct. God. I can't leave. There are people out there with a camera. What? 
TV news crew. And they're heading this way. Tanya, I'm Ross O'Neill from Galaxy Online News. Could we have a quick word? How did they know you're here? Someone must have seen me, or, or maybe it was Douglas McDavy. Tanya, I'd just like to have a quick word. Hide in the bathroom. I'll get rid of them. There's no point. They'll just hang around all night. Tanya. Hi. Ross, is it? It really is you. Last time I checked. And we weren't sure. Seemed a bit improbable. What are you doing here in the, well, the middle of nowhere? I'm minding my own business. We saw someone else come out. A man. This is his room. He's a colleague. So you're here on business? I didn't say that. Pleasure then. I didn't say that either. Is it something to do with Brexit? Border technology? Ross, no one asked me to come here. It's a private visit. What I will say is this. If there's anything I can do in the future to help ease the tensions caused by Brexit, of course, I would be happy to discuss that with the relevant authorities north and south. Now, if you'll excuse me... What's your friend's name, Tanya? He's called Finton. What's your surname? Uh, uh, Cook. Finton Cook. He's a valued colleague from our Dublin office. Thank you. And one last question, Tanya. What's the nature of your relationship with Mr Cook? So... What is the nature of Tanya's relationship with Mr. Cook? Oh, Sinead. You haven't checked your feed yet. I just woke up. I'll save you the bother. Social media has anointed you the adulterous lover. What? Apparently, you're the silver-tongued Celtic Lothario. Oh, you've uh... stolen her away from her extremely rich and successful companion. That's husband. ridiculous. I watched the clip. We were having a meeting when the TV crew ambushed us. Tanya was just about to start meditating. What, in your hotel room? Yeah, well, oh, no. Fintan, maybe you shouldn't say any more. So, what's she up to? I mean, in business terms. She's developed a new location system. It's all very hush-hush. Won't tell me anything about it. Well, the markets are excited. Nano's share price rose 3% overnight just because she dropped a hint. We're back on the road today, looking for a test site. I'll call you later, okay? Hmm. Nice car, isn't it? Reassuringly quiet and clean. Take my phone. Here. Open the voice to text app. Um, this one. That's it. Okay, start recording. Ready? What am I recording? You're recording me, Finton. <clears throat> Since the Brexit referendum in 2016, I have been asked more times than I can remember to offer an opinion. I always refused. Why? Sorry, uh, can I ask, what, what is this for? Daily Telegraph, online edition. I refused to comment because I believed the politicians should be allowed to find a smooth path without constant interventions from prominent public figures. Uh, where are we going, Finton? Left, at the next junction. Hmm. Now, however, as confusion reigns about the best outcome for the UK... You're not wrong there. I feel compelled to speak out. I've been touring the Irish border area with a young colleague, a junior colleague, from our Dublin office. What has become increasingly clear to us both is that future prosperity depends on liberating the Northern Irish economy from unnecessary regulation. Does it? The so-called backstop is a break that will hold back growth and innovation. That's why I am now willing to go on record and say that a no-deal exit is the UK's best bet. Hang on. I haven't finished. I, I'm not sure it's completely accurate. For example? Has it become increasingly clear to us? Are you descending from that view? I'm just not sure. You and I have found a way of working together. A pretty effective way. Is that not true? Absolutely. If you well, analyse it, you'll see how my management style works. I call it message-based mentoring, where I lead, others follow. So, at the start of our journey, you believed it was acceptable to hire a polluting vehicle. Now, you know it isn't. That was an honest mistake. You were also stuck in a process of analogue thinking that slowed your decision making. Sorry? I've had to demonstrate to you how the use of easily available apps speeds up problem resolution. Basically, Finton, you've had a free management workshop. I'm grateful for that. And what you've learned, in a nutshell, is that you are often a few steps behind. I believe that also applies to the Brexit situation. Your brain will, eventually, come to the same conclusion that mine has already reached. Now, can we continue? We drove along the border for a while, then Tanya lost interest. So, we went back to the hotel. 
or I had a surprise waiting for me. I believe we can pioneer a new kind of cross-border trade. Young men and women like my colleague Finton. You already know what it like says. Like my colleague Finton will find fresh ways of achieving cooperation and harmony. Uh, Sinead, for God's sake. What's going on, Finton? Is that why you came all the way up here to read stuff to me off the internet? Everyone in the office is wondering how this happened. Finton Cook left Dublin with a healthy distaste for Brexit, but apparently... He'll be coming back a fully paid-up member of UKIP. I never actually said any of that. She just threw it in there. Okay, well, that's pretty deplorable. To attach your name without you even knowing she was doing it. You didn't know, right? I didn't agree to it. But what? You saw it? She kind of dictated it into her phone. While you were listening? Finton! Why did you let her use you this way? You've never met Tanya. She thinks so fast, I'm still processing point A by the time she's finished point B. You're saying she's a bully? No, she's just smarter than me. She leaves me for dead. Oh, so if she set out to seduce you, for example, you wouldn't have a hope. By the time you <sighs> said no, it'd be all over. Come on, Sinead, do you honestly believe... I wouldn't have believed you'd spend a night with Anushka from Software Design. Ah, oh, that was different. Why, because Anushka's not worth an estimated 800 million? Oh, come on, we've been through this. Yet I never tire of it. Believe me, something like that could never happen with Tanya. Self-control is her middle name. What are you going to do about this? The telegraph piece? Oh, what can I do? She's my boss. She's exploiting you. That's what bosses do, one way or the other. And down the road... What? Let's say I applied for a promotion. Won't hurt that I was held up as a shining example of fresh new thinking by Tanya herself. So that's it. Self-interest trumps self-respect. Uh, the damage is done. Her article is out there in the ether for all eternity. There's nothing I can do about it. You could at least tell her you're not happy and that you don't want to be misrepresented again. But you're not going to do that. <sighs> Did you read that thing I sent you about the new apartment complex in Sandy Cove? Not yet. They'd be perfect for us. They've even got a second bedroom. I think I'll drive back to Dublin. I don't stay with me. Come on. I'll order a bottle from room service. We'll pretend it's a dirty weekend. Hmm? Well, it is a nice room. <laughs> Not every day we get to try a freestanding bathtub. Right. Oh, no, no. Ignore it. That would be irresponsible. Oh. <laughs> oh it's the office. Tanya's trending on Twitter. Huh? I see. She was name-checked on the BBC News by a Tory Brexiteer MP. But the meaningful vote almost upon us. We need to listen to people like Tanya, who got off the fence today and urged us to opt for a no-deal Brexit. With voices like Tanya's on our side, I'm pretty sure we can persuade colleagues not to vote for the Prime Minister's rotten deal. Nice work, Finton. Come on. What? Where are we going? Just come on. I hope there's a good reason why you've invaded my personal space. There's something I have to say. And it can't wait until tomorrow. I think it's important. It is important. Sorry, who are you? I'm Sinead. I work at the Dublin office. I'm confused. Did they send you here? No, she's my... We go out together. Is this your idea? No. Because Finton doesn't strike me as the confrontational type. Clarification. What? It's not a confrontation. He wants to clear something up. The piece she wrote for the Telegraph. First of all... You gave the impression I share your views on Brexit and the backstop. Don't you? Not entirely. So why didn't you say so? You were there when I wrote the piece. I did. Really? I don't think I got through to you, which is why I'm saying it now. Somewhat too late. I realise that. There's more, isn't there, Finton? Mm-hmm. I think you're wrong, Tanya. About what, specifically? A no-deal Brexit would be bad for the economy here, north and south. Details, Finton. OK. A concrete example? Northern Ireland exports a lot of lamb to the EU. Sheep farmers say WTO tariffs would push up the price by 20%. So, the EU will buy cheaper lamb from elsewhere and kill the industry. Well, they can diversify. Being a sheep farmer isn't some God-given determination. Next reason. The most important reason to avoid a hard Brexit. Go on. If the border reappears... So will all the old tensions and suspicions. The troubles will start again. Well, not necessarily, but it is more likely. There are plans already to send British police reinforcements over. What you're saying is that the Good Friday Agreement didn't succeed? Uh, hang on. She's not saying that. My uncle was a guard, a policeman, stationed near the border. He was murdered by the paramilitaries 30 years ago. Par for the course back then. Not a week went by without some new atrocity. The Good Friday Agreement put an end to that. 
but by implication, it only put a lid on sectarian tensions. It didn't resolve the underlying reasons. That's not as simple as you can't wave a wand. Okay. And... Centuries of hostility doesn't disappear overnight, it takes generations. What I'm suggesting. <sighs> Maybe a new treaty, negotiated in the context of a changed relationship, could address the problem head on. Have you considered that? Or are you both so imprisoned in your thought bubbles that you can't even contemplate an idea that you don't already agree with? <laughs> with respect... I hate when people lead with that expression. Sorry? It's a polite way of saying, you don't know what you're talking about, moron. That's not what I intended. With respect, I think it might have been. What were you going to say? There are many local factors. Historical wrinkles. What? What's your mate saying? I'm in the middle of saying what I'm saying. If all it took was a bit of blue skies thinking, we'd have solved the problem by now. One thing matters more to me than anything else. My business. Nano, c'est moi. Moi, je suis nano. We don't change the world. We react to changes in the world. At this historical moment, borders are back in fashion. As a business, we can pretend this isn't happening, or we can surf the zeitgeist. The opportunities are huge. Plus, by engaging with this historical moment, we have the potential to shape how these things unfold. Our humane, nuanced solutions might make brute force less likely. I'd be more willing to buy all of this if you hadn't fireproofed yourself. Excuse me? You talk about engaging with the historical moment. But as soon as the leave vote happened, you moved your family out of London to France and your corporate HQ to Ireland. Disengaging, I think they call it. What's your point, Finton? It smacks of hypocrisy. Wow. That came out a bit. I mean, yeah, wow. Hypocrisy is maybe too strong a word. I assume you're heading back to Dublin. Yeah, uh, well, I'm, I might stay over. No, you're no good to me or the business hanging around here. Right. Well, uh, I'll call you, okay? Okay. Tomorrow morning, I'll be making an announcement right here in the hotel. What is it? The announcement? I'm not telling you that. I can only assume your animosity towards it's not me animosity. stems from a profound resistance to change. It's possibly the most damaging force at large in the world today the inability to accept that things might work differently. My announcement tomorrow might help you see that sometimes a disruption of the status quo can lead to positive outcomes. So, I'm invited. You thought I was going to fire you. It crossed my mind. Part of you, small but significant, even hoped I'd fire you. Has self-sabotage been a theme in your life? I don't know, maybe a little. That's why I'm not firing you. Figure out the logic for yourself. I'm trying. Anyway, I need your help in the morning. Otherwise, we'll have to get the whole communications team up here, and I'd rather avoid that. Fine. I mean, great. Just let me know what I can do. Do you know how to live stream an event through the company Twitter feed? <sighs> kind of. I'll show you. Phone. What? Give me your phone. Tuesday morning, the day of the meaningful vote at Westminster, and here on the Irish border... Tanya's ready for action, with me as her rookie cameraman. Thanks for coming back, Ross. Cool. I'd never say no to a scoop. Well, Finton will be tweeting it at the same time, so it's not quite an exclusive. You ready? When you are. Finton, you remember what I showed you? Start filming now. All good. Go for it. The House of Commons votes today. And I'm sure every MP will vote for what they believe to be the best option for the UK. But Mrs May's deal is not that option. It binds the UK and the island of Ireland into a regulatory straitjacket. So let's do some positive thinking. Britain and Ireland have always traded and they always will. That's why I'm planning a new nano production facility with departments located on both sides of the border. It's still early days, but we've been looking at creating about 200 new jobs in each facility, demonstrating that cross-border business can and will continue after Brexit. Within minutes, Tanya was all over social media. When Wall Street opened, Nano's share price spiked up another 5%. Everyone wanted a piece of Tanya, even Douglas McDavy. 
I'd like to buy lunch for the two of you. I thought you wanted nothing more to do with us. Oh, far from it. That was the impression you gave us the other day. Well, it certainly wasn't my intention. Plus, you pissed Tanya off by telling the press she was here. What? Mm -hmm. I did no such thing. As God is my judge. Look, Fenton, things change. The proverbial goalposts have been on the move again. I have an offer I'd like to put to you. Now, order what you like. It's on me. This place has the best steaks in the county. Some of them from my own farm. I'll stick with the water. Same. Right, you are. We're a little confused, Douglas. Why is that? Finton, do you want to... Last time we met, you made it a point of principle that you wouldn't go along with anything that involved border controls. And that was then. Your new production facility. Where are you planning to build it? Look far too early to say. So it's up for grabs. I sit on the district council up the road here. In fact, I chair our Enterprise and Regeneration Committee. We'd be very keen to discuss incentives. So, you've done a 180. What was it you said the other day? I follow the bottom line, not the party line? Your business would be great for the area. What incentives would your committee offer me? We anticipate significant subsidies from London post-Brexit to stop the Northern Irish economy from going pear-shaped. Not interested. What? Why not? Balance of probability. There might be subsidies to which you might get access. For which there would certainly be intense competition. Correct. Meaning the project might not get any subsidy. I couldn't possibly base a business decision on that set of imponderables. So what would be of interest to you? Private capital. Business people putting their own cash and energy into it. Having a stake, determined to succeed. I'm sure I could make that happen. The other day, I offered you a gift-wrapped opportunity to make a financial killing. It would have cost you next to nothing. Yet, you turned it down. Why would I trust you to go out and raise money for a far larger and more complicated proposal? Of course, look, I'll be more than happy to make a section of my land available to you, as discussed, for a modest fee. I don't think so. That ship has sailed. Thanks for the water. Okay, look, you can have the site for nothing. If you'll at least consider bringing your factory here, uh, call it a sweetener. I'll give it some thought. Come on, Finton. Time to go home. We were on our way back to Dublin when we heard the news. The eyes to the right, 202. The nose to the left, 432. <laughs> There you go, Tanya. Your border technology is still a possibility. Dublin will be on maximum alert for a no deal. You're trending on Twitter. The FT is asking if Tanya is about to make another killing. All this coverage, it won't hurt the share price. It's almost as if you planned it. Are you accusing me of something? All I'm saying, it's very convenient that the news people found out where you were staying. Gave your visit a free song it wouldn't have had if you'd announced it in advance. A free song? Excellent. I'm glad you think so. It was you who tipped them off. Let's say it was. Does it matter? Did anyone die as a result? No. I raised the profile of my business. Now we are in pole position to jump in if and when border technology is needed, either here or somewhere else in the world. It's a game, Finton, tailored to our uncertain times. So I call this week's efforts a success. And I couldn't have done it without you. Vincent Cook. Hey, there's a dude here in reception from the car hire place. He has a bag for you. Says you left it in the booth when you switched cars at the hotel in Monaghan. Does that make sense? It made perfect sense. It was a smooth black bag. Not mine. So it must have been Tanya's. She's planning to sell the company. What? Mm, to our biggest competitor. Oh, see for yourself. Negotiations with Steinscope are already happening, but here's the really interesting bit. Strategies for pushing up company value, fact-finding trip to Irish border, create buzz around supposed border tech, supposed? Mm, doesn't exist. She made it up to boost the share price. Use Washington back channels to propose solutions on Mexico border. She's batting her eyelids at Trump. Okay, but isn't this what tech gurus do? 
We might call it lying, but they'd see it as market cultivation. Okay, here's an outright lie. She said she'd create hundreds of jobs on both sides of the border with a new production facility, right? So read this. Slash overheads via full automation of all future manufacturing facilities. Full automation robots. And massive redundancies. So all this talk of new jobs, pure blether. What are you going to do, Fenton? I've got to challenge her about it. Has she actually broken any laws? Maybe not. But Steinsco will be pretty shocked that she's been trying to push the price up on the back of a load of fairy stories. Could I just take a reality check before you decide what to do? I know what you're going to say. Our share options. If Tanya sold the business at today's price, you and I would stand to make a lot... That much. Okay. Each. Yeah. That's pretty... Uh... If we pooled our resources, it's more than enough to buy one of those apartments out in Sandy Cove. Ah, oh, forget that. We could get a house. I'm thinking ahead. So I suppose the question you have to ask yourself is exposing the truth worth that much to you. And will it actually change anything? While I was still making up my mind, Tanya went public. The nano founder has announced that she's in talks with rival tech giant Steinscope about a possible $16 billion sale. Nano's value has escalated recently following rumours, as yet unconfirmed, that the company has developed new border surveillance technology to meet global demands. There are private airports terminals for people like Tanya. Well, of course there are. And that's where I found her, just in the nick of time, before she got back on her shiny jet and left the country. So the guy brought my bag back to you and you decided to look inside. That's about right. I'm not sure if that breaches any specific clause in your employment contract, but it's certainly against the spirit of our business. Really? Quietly colluding in a scam is the nano way? If you had any understanding of how businesses actually operate, you would know that no scam has taken place. So how would you describe it? Market cultivation. What about fake news? Worthy of the White House press room, with the sole purpose of fattening the calf before taking it to market. Whatever happened to nano c'est moi? There are new things I want to do. For that, I need capital. Lots of it. But not people. I enjoyed your thoughts about the non-human workforce. Actually, that's something you could help me with. I thought you were firing me. I'm quite fond of you, Finton. I'd like to help you reboot your career. Despite some obvious deficiencies, you're sincere and hardworking and amusing to be around. You forgot always willing to be patronised. One of my new ventures is a kind of intellectual hothouse, brainstorming the cutting-edge ideas that will shape our future. You've heard of universal basic income. And paying people to sit at home watching telly. That's an unhelpfully cynical perspective. It'll be our way of saying, we don't need you, but we're nice, so we'll look after you. I'm sure they'll be eternally grateful. There's a job there for you, if you want it. Let's call it Director of Research. Definite step up. You're trying to bribe me. I'm trying to help you break the cycle of self-sabotage in which you unfortunately appear to be stuck. Maybe you could give me an answer by tomorrow? Okay, Douglas, remember what I said? Try to forget I'm filming you. Deliver the speech the way you deliver any speech in the council chamber. You're sure you've thought this through? All the way to its logical conclusion. She'll be discredited, damaged, and you'll have no job to go to in the morning. Yeah, but I'll have struck a blow for truth and justice in a cynical world. For that, I'll be hugely appreciated. For a week, at least. So why are you doing it? Well, because whatever way I twist it, this just seems like the right thing to do. Okay, you're on. Camera's rolling. <laughs> Last week, I was approached out of the blue by a very well-known businesswoman with a global profile. She tried to involve me in a business proposal which subsequently turned out to be entirely factitious. Not only did this prominent woman lie about her business venture, she also promised, falsely, to create jobs in areas that desperately need them. My fellow councillors, I've had enough of this. So today, I want to use the humble platform afforded me by this council chamber to name and shame the perpetrator. Fintan Cook. There's another killer app you probably haven't heard of. Oh, hi, Tanya. It's called Find Me Briefs. Very useful for anyone... Who's lost their wife once. Who's looking for a lawyer in a hurry, like you. 
Thanks. Using the company platform to live stream McDavy's speech. That was beyond unethical. It was an abuse of your position and an abuse of the trust I personally placed in you. The funny thing is, until the other day, I wouldn't have known how to do that live streaming thing. And then you showed me, proving that a fella's never too old to learn new skills. You are finished, Vinton. Finished at Nano and finished in the tech sector. On the plus side, I haven't been summoned to testify before the United States Senate Judiciary Committee to answer allegations that I fraudulently manipulated my company's share value. I don't think you're going to get an easy ride like Zuckerberg. Some people from security will be at your office door in approximately 30 seconds. Do not attempt to remove any documentation or property belonging to Nano Corporation. Before we say goodbye, do you, uh, remember my idea for a school's writing competition? Barely. I think I know the answer now to the essay question. Is technology more reliable than humans? Not if it doesn't actually exist. So there I was, back in Dublin and out of a job. As the UK Parliament continued its tortured search for a way out, or a way back in, or a way to postpone the whole damn thing, I had become an early casualty of Brexit. I know they want to fire me. Guilty by association. But they can't. I haven't hijacked the company Twitter feed or read the CEO's private correspondence. Oh, you make me sound like some kind of crazed hacker. It certainly had the desired effect. Steinscope have pulled out of the purchase, and Nano's share price has bottomed out. For now. For now. Sinead, in case you were considering a uh, principled resignation I'm in not. solidarity with... What? I won't be resigning. Oh, well, that's good, because what I was about to say... Share options. I've lost mine, obviously. <laughs> well, it wouldn't really go with the whole whistleblower chic. No. Well, you've still got your options. It's not worth much at the moment. But once the company has new management and the whole Tanya scandal has blown over, if I sit tight, who knows what they'll be worth? The only way is up. Did Steinscope offer you a job? They said they'd be happy to explore the opportunities. I'm not sure that's a good thing. No, no. You could do with a change of direction. Oh, I really could. Outside the tech sector. Let me run this idea by you. <laughs> Guided walks through the border region. Hmm? Bit of history, bit of exercise, a few pub lunches. And lots of explaining done by you. Yeah, like you said, that's what I'm good at. While you're getting that off the ground, maybe you should move in with me. See how the whole cohabiting thing works out before we commit to buying somewhere. <laughs> You've changed your tune. Well, Finton, let me explain. We live in strange times, and if we keep waiting for the right moment, it might never arrive. In A Border Fantasy by Hugh Costello, Finton was played by Colin Morgan and Sinead by Simone Kirby. Tanya was played by Jeannie Spark, Douglas by Frank Laverty, and Ross Fergal McElheron. The play was directed by Owen O'Callaghan and was a Big Fish Radio production for BBC Radio 4. <laughs>